Don here in Florida. Today we're going to do something a little different, something un totally unnecessary, but something that may be useful for anyone out there that may not have a mill at their disposal. I've seen this done on some other channels, but uh, we're going to go a little different route here. I was up at the flea market last year and I was walking around and I picked up this little vise here and it's missing a, a plate here it's got one there and the guy that was selling it he sort of reminded me of the, the kid the banjo playing kid from the movie deliverance <laughs> all grown up and ready to retire and uh you know he had the coveralls on he had that that look and he was selling a bunch of tools and, and i saw this and i've seen these before that's the funny thing i've, I've seen these before and i i, I just stuck my nose up at them because they had the they had the mating surface for the uh, the South Bend style uh, setup and I, I thought you know I don't need that but when I saw that the guy had it listed I think for twenty dollars and I said hey yeah you know what's that right there and he goes South Bend and I go excuse me he goes, South Bend I go okay so i looked it over i go there's a there's a jaw missing here and he's giving me this this uh, rah, 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 attitude i couldn't understand a word he was saying and uh so i offered him five and he's rah, 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 rah. Uh, okay so i started walking away and then he said rah, 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 and i said what and he goes ten dollars ten dollars and at ten dollars uh, i looked it over i said uh okay so I gave him $10. I was going to offer him 8 <laughs> But he was so cranky, I thought he might show up with his brothers here in my garage, you know, on any given day. You know, come stomping in. That sure is a pretty mill you got there, boy. You know, something like that. And I was like, oh, no, I don't need that. So uh, I gave him the $10 and I walked away. And it's been hit, sitting here in the garage ever since. Uh, what I kind of decided to do with it is make a five access milling attachment for the Craftsman Atlas lathe over there. Technically I don't need it, but I just thought it would be a fun project to do. So having a little bit of scrap laying around, I had that, that cutoff right there that was just sitting on my bench taking up space, and that was almost the right size for what I want to do. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to, we're going to square this up and, and uh, bore it and do a couple things to get it set up. So we can get this on there and then I get this big one inch piece of plate that my buddy gave me this stuff is dead hard this is hard hard stuff gear I made some tea nuts out of this out of the monarch lathe last year and this stuff is hard hard stuff so I think I'm gonna start with this I'm gonna cut out the piece that I need and then we'll move on to the lathe and uh, get this set and then we'll start joining everything up and we're gonna make a milling attachment for the lathe and I think it'll be fun so let's get to it okay this may turn into an all-day job so bear with me Two hours 
that was some extremely hard one inch thick plate i'm gonna run the timer on this and see how, how long that took that that was a long time interestingly enough this came out pretty darn square on the bandsaw but i'm going to clean it up because uh, i want nice square edges when we go ahead and do this i got one two square edges here and these are a little rough so we'll clean those up right now so we have four square edges and let me zero out here let's uh let's take a small amount let's take uh 15. I think I'll, uh, that's a one inch, that's a, speed it up a bit. Clean that up real nice. Again, we got a couple burrs on there, nothing big. And check it with my square, nice and square. All right, happy about that. All right, let's move on back over here. All right, I'll set up for a little turn in action. Let's go ahead and get this end squared up. So I went and got a different uh, boring bar off my other lathe and uh, the resonance on the other one was just getting ridiculous. So I'm gonna finish it up with this. I, I was just going out of my mind and, and that, uh, that was dulling at the same time pretty quickly. I wasn't getting good cuts. So let's see what we can do with this. <laughs> Alright, 
right, let's see what we got. Oh, much better. Looks like we just about hit it. Oh yeah, we did. Right there. Ugh. Okay. So, now that we got that finished up, I think we can go over to the mill. So let's get on. Okay, so we're all set up here in the mill. We're gonna take out approximately half an inch from this side. Uh, we're gonna have a high side and a low side. How do I know which side is high and low? Because I wrote high there and I wrote low there. <laughs> A little bit of measurement and I came up with what I needed. I've got everything um, zeroed out here and ready to go. I've got uh, 50 thousands coming off at this first pass, so let's see what happens. So we're going to be tapping this uh, 3 8 coarse. So we're going to now drill this the appropriate size. All right, we're going to move it over to zero and then over 750. Ooh, went past it. Back up seven nine fifty right there. There we go. <sighs> I'm gonna vacuum that up. Yeah, I was talking about the banjo boy at the beginning. Got me thinking about banjo players. They're a different breed, that's for sure. I can only think of a couple of famous banjo players, though, besides the banjo boy in Deliverance. That was like Steve Martin. Uh, Steve Martin played that banjo. He's quite good at it. So probably younger folks don't remember who Steve Martin is. He's a, he was a funny guy on Saturday Night Live back when it used to be a funny show. And then there was Major Hochstetter on Hogan's Heroes. He was a banjo player too. Quite good as well. So, but uh, yeah, banjo players, man. If you live in a state where you got a banjo player in it, you might want to think about moving somewhere else. So. <laughs> I, I always wonder about them banjo players, you know. How can you really trust them? Especially after seeing that movie Deliverance, you know. That was a rough movie. And we're not putting too many threads in there. We're just going to put some grub screws down in there. Uh, and you'll see why when we get there. And then we'll move this off the other side. Okay, so we marked this one out. We got her set up. We're going to put in some uh, holes and... and uh, 
put in some holes and uh, threads for grub screws here as well. And these ones here are going to have to go all the way through. Get loose in there on me. All right, I guess it's about lunchtime. So let me get cleaned up here and go eat some lunch. All right, so we got the machining done that we wanted to do, but uh, now we need to take some measurements and we can't do that with this in the way. So let's get this tool post off of here and out of the way. And we need to take this off as well. I think I'm gonna take that handle off here so I don't break it more than it is. I don't notice it's broken here and I've never repaired it so I don't want to break the other side off. We'll get that off in a second. So let's get this off of here. There we go. I'm gonna go ahead and put that on. Oh lost the pen. Don't lose your pens people. Give me a second I'm gonna put that on the bench. Alright slight delay there. I was looking at this while you were away. Um, I took the pin out and I realized that the pin is going to be too long for this so we're going to have to make some short pins 
to use on this part otherwise uh, the screw would just not be able to go in so we're gonna we're gonna go ahead up and make some pins and what I did was I, I got a, an old drill bit here and the drill bit is the exact same diameter 3115 as the original pin so what we're gonna do is we're gonna bevel this edge off and then we're gonna cut it off and I guess we'll end up with a short drill bit but this was out of my junk pile so it's not gonna matter so let me go get set up over there by the grinder and uh, we'll start working on that okay so we're gonna grind it to the original angle here so I got my protractor out and let's see how well this works Seem to be hitting that angle pretty well. Well, I'm right on my angle, so that's good. Yeah, she's right there. Okay, so I think that should just about do it. We're going to go ahead and uh, take her over here and cut her off. And it needs to be less than half the length of this one. So we're going to basically just put it right about there. And there she goes. Probably a little too hot to pick up right now. So I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, pause this. I got to do another one and then we'll be right back. Okay, coming back for our first on camera test. We've cut off our new pin stubs here. They're quite a bit shorter than the original. I probably could have made them just a little bit longer than that, but you know. So let's go ahead and test this on here drop it down on there and always remember that the bevel goes down so I hope I'm getting that on camera bevel goes down like that and bring it in so it just makes contact oh yeah it locked right there okay and the next one as well we're gonna bevel down, push it in. And bring it up till it locks. Right there, one. And a two. And that ain't going anywhere. So, happy with that. So let's get that all back out of there and those that are really paying attention can see I've already put my grub screws in here. I didn't do uh, clearance bores on those. I just backed them in and then inserted the Allen wrench up through this direction. And I think I'm just gonna leave it at that. That way if they ever do loosen up, and I, I hope they don't, they won't go anywhere. They'll just stay in place. So get those out, get our pins out. I think they'll be safe right there for now. Um, get this out of the way. So the next order of business is going to be my favorite welding. We're going to have to weld this up. So uh, before we do that, we need to uh, find the position. Put, ah, before we do that, we need to find the position of where we want to put our slide. So 
Uh, the, I think about the easiest way to do that is probably going to be just to mark it. So let's get some dicum on here. And probably I should get some clamps. Let me go get some clamps. Move this out of the way, I guess. And that's going to go right there. And this is going to go up here. So uh, I'd like to clamp that together before I mark. Actually, I can bring that out like that. So, because we're just just gauging not exactly where we want it, but for height. So let's go ahead and get that opened up. So what I want to do is I want to find the center point here. And what I do with my scriber. So I'm going to reach in there and try to scribe that. And then when I take it out, I'll know where the center point is. There we go. I'll make sure I get a good mark in there. There we go. And take that back apart. Oh yeah, nice, nice marks on there. I can see that well. So. Let's get that back out of the way and we're going to make marks for okay so we're going to try to find the center point here and, and i'm not going to knock myself out because there's there's always a little bit of slop no matter what you do with nuts and bolts so i can see right there that that's my mark so that's 10925 let me write that down and the other mark is at uh from that point let's get it so you guys can see it uh 17240 1.7240 and I'll use my calculator real quick here because my brain's not functioning this morning I haven't had enough coffee uh, 1.7240 minus 58 come up with 10483 10483 so let's get that dialed in. Uh, okay, 14085, that's pretty close. We're gonna mark that right down the center, right across there like that. I can see that right on the first shot. So <laughs> leave it at that. Happy about that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over and I'm, I'm gonna mark this so I know which was my top when I first started measuring. And that would bend the top like that. Okay, I don't want to confuse that. And we're also going to have to find the center. I just realized that. Actually, you know what? We can find the center on the DRO. All right, kids, I just took a look at the uh, clock on the wall. I realized we're running a little bit late into this. So I think we're going to cut this off here, turn this into a two-parter, and uh, hopefully get this milling attachment set up and, and good to go in the uh, next episode, okay? So till next time.